Welcome back. Now let's look at exercise number two. So you can go to this link, bit.ly forward slash dart underscore ex2, and it will take you to this dart pad. So it opens up my shared guest there, and this is exercise number two. Uh, I'm just going to hide these issues there for now. Uh, if we look at question number one, you can see this question number one, two, three, and question number four. So question number one, using the variable defined at the bottom, print the following lines to the console. So you want to print out, this is the variable, a slogan, that's the slogan, and I want you to use a print statement and print out all lowercase, all uppercase, um, check if the word contains the word best, and if it does, print out true. And then you're going to print out or replace. You can see there McDonald's, best breakfast muffin ever. But actually the text said best burgers ever. So you need to replace burgers with breakfast muffin. Okay, so try that out. Then uh, question number two, using the variables below, print the following using only the variables. Next year the child will be, so that's what you need to print out. Next year the child will be eight years old, which means you need to take this string and add one to the seven in order to get your eight. Uh, and then print out that line. Today the temperature outside is 33 degrees Celsius, and you can see I've got 32.768. So you'll need one. You need to use one of the methods to convert this 32 in order to print out the 33 there. Okay, then question number three. The BMI of a person can be calculated by taking the weight divided, and the weight must be in kilograms, divided by the height in meters squared. So the height must be squared, and then you say weight divided by the height that's squared. Thus, someone with a weight of 80 kilograms and is 1.9 meters tall will have a BMI of 22.16. And how do we get that 22.16? You square 1.9 and then you take 80 divided by that answer. And then you must use these two variables below where I give you the weight and the height and you must work out the BMI. Right, question number four. Look at the coding below and write down what you think the output will be. And you may run the code afterwards to check your answer. So if you obviously if you run it now, you will get the answer there because I'm printing it out. But first on a piece of paper, see if you can do this on your own and see if you can get to the same answer. So now pause the video, try these questions on your own, and then play again when you're ready to see the answers. Right, let's carry on. So question number one, we want to print out these four different ones. So let's do the first print statement there. And we will print this. Uh, let, let's start off with question one with a few stars. So we know this is where question one starts. And uh, for now, I'm going to hide that print statement there so it doesn't print out that one. So if we run, you'll see it will start with question one right at the top. Okay, so let's do question one. So we want to print out the first one that is all lowercase. So I want to go to the slogan and I want to use the two lowercase method. And using that method, we'll print out McDonald's best burgers ever, all lowercase. So I hope you've got that one correct. Let's look at the next one. Now everything uppercase. So I'm going to take slogan again. And I'm going to use two uppercase. Right, let's run that one. And we should get the same one. Right, those two, very easy. Two lowercase, two uppercase. Now we want to check if the word best actually exists inside of that slogan. So how do we do that? So we say that we should print out contains the word best with a question mark. So I'm going to print out that exactly as it is contains the word best. Now you can either use double quotation marks here in the print statement. Let's do that for for this example. We can use double quotation marks, uh, which will be fine. Contains the word best, or you could have used the backslash characters there, the escape character. Okay, so contains the word best, true or false. So we have a space there, and then in that space, we can now use the dollar sign with some sort of calculation to work out if that word best actually exists in this 
slogan. So you remember that we can just use the slogan, use the dot, and use the contains method. And then the text it contains. So we are searching for best. So I'm going to use best there. And if we run this now, contains the word best? True. Yes, it contains the word the word best. So exactly what we got there, or we had there, contains the word best with a question mark true. So if I rem remove the word best there, and I run it again, it should show a false there because that doesn't exist anymore. Okay, there you can see the false. So let's use uh, best there still. Okay, and then the last one, McDonald's best breakfast muffin ever. So what we what you can see here, the difference is that instead of saying best burgers ever, we're saying best breakfast muffin, muffin ever. So we are replacing some of it. So let's go to print again. And we print out the slogan, but with a small change. So we want to replace all. What do we want to replace? We want to replace, uh, let me just see, big breakfast muffin so we want to replace burgers with second argument there or burgers with breakfast muffin yeah so let's see if that works okay so sometimes uh, I had a problem there again so I just copied and pasted my code again with a new pad and then ran it and then it's fine so let's see at the last one there print the slogan replace all re replace burgers with breakfast muffin and you can see then best breakfast muffin ever so you need to have used the replace all method and in this one the contains method so that's just working with strings a bit so i'm hoping now that you are okay with this question number one and that you can work with some basic operations on strings Okay, so uh, I see I've placed your coding here, so then I would have done it like this maybe. Okay, and delete, delete that one. Right, so let's look at question number two. So question number two, using the variables below, print the following using only the variables. Next year, the child will be eight years old. Okay, so your coding here. Let's use a print statement there again, and we have this one as question two. Let's start with your quotation marks there. Question two. And have a few stars there. Let's take the same amount of stars. And let's just see if we can print out that. Right, so there we've got question number two after that. Right, so let's do question number two here. We've got the child age declared as a string seven, but we want to print it out after adding one to it. So how do we add one to it? And firstly, we need to convert this string to an integer. So how do we convert a string to an integer? So let's see if we can do this in one print statement. So what we want to print out is next year, the child will be, now instead of, I can obviously just type eight years old and I'll get the same output. But let's say we want to use this variable and add one to it and then print it out. So I'm going to use the dollar sign there because we need to do some calculation there. So firstly, I will need to convert child age to an integer. So I'm going to use, sorry, should not have changed that. So I'm going to use int dot pass and then I'm going to pass in the child age. So you'll remember that int.parse child age will convert child age, which is a string, now to an integer. And now that it is an integer, I can just add one to it. Next year, the child will be eight. But we said years old should also be there. So we can just add years old. And then running it again should be fine. So using the dollar sign, string interpolation, and the curly braces, inside of that, we can do our calculation. In this case, we're first using int.pass to change the string 7 to an integer 7 so that we can do an arithmetic operation on it so we can actually add one to it. Okay, so I hope you've got this one. Now let's say, the, let's see the, the next one. They say today the temperature outside is 33 degrees Celsius. So let's do that also in a print statement. 
So let's start with the text there. Today, the temperature outside is. Now, how do we get the 33 from this temp outside variable? So this variable has got 32.768. So I need to convert this now to a string, but it needs to be rounded if I want to print it out. So I can either use um, maybe the round method or something like that. So let's start with the dollar sign and then some sort of calculation. So let's see what we've got there. We've, we can go to temp outside and we're going to use the two string as fixed. And now if I want to have zero decimal places, I can just use the, the zero there. So let's just see if that runs fine. Today the temperature outside is 33. So you can see it rounded the 32.76 to a 33 by just using two string as fixed and zero. But there's some other methods also that we can use. So let's see if we can use something like, you can see there's seal, floor, round even. So we can say round also there and run it and you get the exact same output. Okay, so there were two ways that you could do this. Even some of the other methods could also give you 33 there. For instance, if you take the sealing method, it will also give you 33. Okay, so there's a few methods that you could have used to get to the 33 there. So it's 33, and then after that, we're going to say degrees Celsius. Run it again, and you should get the correct output. Right, let's go to question number three. They say there the BMI of a person can be calculated by taking the weight in kilograms divided by the height in meters squared. Thus, someone with a weight of 88 and is 1.9 meters tall will have a BMI of 22.15. Use the two variables below to calculate the BMI. Our coding here, so again, I'm going to use that same print statement just to indicate that we are now at question number three. And let's do this calculation quickly. So you could have created another variable called the BMI. And in order to work out the BMI, we need to use the, uh, the weight. So I'm going to start with the weight divided by uh, the height in meters squared. So in order to square something, in this case, I can just use height times height will give me that, that value squared. And that's basically it. So it's the weight divided by the height squared. So that's my BMI. So now how do I um, print out the BMI? I can go and say, well, let's print out BMI. And maybe we want to round that BMI while we are printing it out. All right, and the BMI will be 25. Right, so I hope you got uh, the exact same answer there. We can even take the example we gave here, which should be 80 there. And we had 1.9. And we should get the same 22.16. But because I rounded it, I will get 22. Uh, I can also use to string as fixed. And use two decimal places there to get the same output as we had, 22.16. Now let's look at question number four, which is a bit more interesting. So look at the coding below and write down what you think the output will be. And you may run the code afterwards to check your answer. So I'm going to start again with, uh, firstly, printing out its question number four. And we can print out the answers there and see how we got to them. Right, so if you run now, you will see the answers is A4, B8, C6, and D8. So how did we get to those answers? So let's quickly have a look at it. After this line executes, we know that A will be 5. So I, I think you agree with me on that one. Now let's take the next line. After this line executes, B, we can assign B here to something. So B would be A minus minus. But because the minus minus is at the end there, it's a post fix uh, decrement, this one, which means that we're going to first assign A to B, and A is currently 5, so B will also be 5, and then we're going to decrement A. So then A will be 5 minus 1, 4. All right, you've got it so far. So B would be 5 before we subtracted the 4 because it's a post increment, this one. 
our post decrement. Right, let's go to the next line. So in this line, we're working with C now. So C would be, and now this is a prefix increment, which means that we're first going to add 1 to B and then assign it to C. Uh, whereas the A minus minus means we're first going to assign the A to B and then deduct 1. So in C's case now, we're going to increment B first and then assign it to C. So in the previous line, B was 5. So now incrementing B would make B 6, and then that 6 will be assigned to C. So B will then be 6 in this line. Right, last one. We're assigning D, and we're also changing B there. So let's look at those two. So D would then be B plus equals 2. Now, this is not a pre or a post. This is, um, this is so just, just a normal operation there. So it, it doesn't work the same as the plus plus or the minus minus. So we're basically just saying, what is the answer of B plus 2? So B plus 2, B in the previous line was a 6. So B plus 2 will make B 8. And that's exactly what we are assigning to D as well. Because D equals whatever B plus 2 is. And B plus 2 will be 8. Okay, so let's look at the output. A equals 4. Now, how did we get there? So we, we work back, uh, backwards. D will be 8 and B will be 8. So B will be 8, D will be 8. Correct. C will be 6. We already have B there. C will be 6. So we can see C is 6. And then the last one that we've got for A, A will be 4. So working backwards, you get the values that you were looking for. So yes, this printout is 100% correct. That's it for this exercise. Hope you've learned something. See you in the next one.